that's the secondary engine cutoff. What we saw there just a moment ago on our screen was the something we call the our orbital map developed by the Colesman Company for us. It will show as we progress through this two day of this space mission. Flight the progress. Uh, says the cutoff conditions look very nice at the uh, sustainer engine cutoff and we have had separation. We had separation about five minutes and 15 seconds in. There is a separation. The uh, Gina is... In perhaps 30 seconds we should be in a uh, an Atlas, uh, a Gina, rather an Agena primary propulsion system burn, which will place the Agena in hopefully the orbit we'd like. On our Colesman orbital map now, you see the progress in real time. Our altitude display here shows the Agena is presently about 135 nautical miles high. We're shooting for uh, about a 161 nautical mile orbit. A little faint red line is edging up that altitude curve uh, right on the plan value. That's a red line Six on... Six minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. It's a red line on the mission control map. Our map is not in the same colors as that mission control where these where uh, television cameras are not yet permitted under NASA rules. That 161 nautical miles, which is the circular orbital height of the Agena, is 185 uh, land miles up. When the Gemini is launched, and the countdown there is T minus 88 minutes and counting. We had a momentary uh, drop out on our telemetry according to the Agena controller. He says he cannot confirm the start of the PPS of the primary propulsion system burn at this point. We'll watch that's not necessarily fatal. We'll watch some other aspects here before we can uh, give you additional information on the Agena burn. If all telemetry is out from the Agena, it would mean that this mission is scrubbed before the Gemini ever gets off the ground. They have to have the telemetry reports from the uh, Agena. That is the only uh, source they have for uh, adequate information from the Agena. It can be tracked by ground-based radar, of course, but that would not be adequate for this flight. Uh, this is a critical moment at uh, Houston as they wait to see if that telemetry can be restored to the Agena. The... Uh, there are so many ifs in this program, any one of the ifs could uh, throw it off, uh, but uh, one of the major ifs, uh, if the Agena gets into its proper orbit, uh, or an orbit that can be corrected by its uh, onboard propulsion system, then Gemini will go. But if Agena is not placed in its proper orbit, the uh, Gemini spacecraft with the two astronauts aboard waiting at Cape Kennedy will wait. It will not go. And uh, if uh, the mission has to be scrubbed entirely, the Gemini, of course, will not be launched at all. In that case, here's more from Paul Haney, apparently. Primary transmitter from the Agena, the primary telemetry transmitter, right at about the point when the primary propulsion system in the Agena should have come on. We saw the chamber pressure rise in the Agena, and then we experienced this dropout of telemetry. So we... Uh, We're eight minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. There have been some uh, 20 Atlas launches, uh, successful Atlas launches from the Cape since uh, uh, the Mercury program. Eight minutes program and 50 seconds into the flight. Now we've just had a report come in from one downrange radar, which did see a, an Agena burn. Again, we'd have to qualify that as preliminary information. We're nine minutes in. And according to our nominal value, we should uh, cut off at uh, 555.7 seconds. You mathematicians can work with that one. It's slightly over nine minutes. We should be at about the nine at the cutoff point. That's the cutoff of the Agena burn, that is the use of the Agena jets uh, to put the Agena uh, slightly off the uh, normal course. It would follow on a ballistic missile path, that is, if it had not used its uh, propulsion system, to put it on a path uh, that would be more nearly uh, the same orbit that the Gemini will reach if the Gemini is launched uh, 85 minutes from now as scheduled. 
However, these are tense moments as uh, Houston waits to find out whether anything has happened to that Gemini. Five seconds in, we still have no telemetry. Ten minutes. We should have had uh, Atlas Agena primary propulsion system burnout at this point. This could indicate, of course, that something uh, went wrong in the Agena propulsion system. This is Houston. Let's go back to the Cape now and find out what's been going on here. As soon as we get some additional information on the Agena, we'll come back to you. Attempting Check to ignite Cape. the Agena engines uh, may this have caused a difficulty Lawrence aboard there. At the Cape. We're now at uh, resuming our count, continuing with our master count. We're now at 84 minutes and 29 seconds and counting. Some three minutes after the hour, about three minutes after the Atlas Agena liftoff, the hatches were closed on the Gemini 6 spacecraft, and we're now gearing up at the 100-foot level in the White Room to prepare to evacuate it and uh, be ready to continue down with the rest of the count. Following the Atlas Agena liftoff, we got a pretty good little fire going in the umbilical section out at Launch Complex 14. This is not considered to be any problem. We have, are playing water on it at the present time, and it appears to be under control. Very often on a launch, we will get fires around the base of the uh, umbilical and at the, on the pad itself. Uh, this is a natural phenomenon for sometimes from fuel spillage, and it will be cleaned out, and it is not expected to be a problem. In the meantime, our countdown is continuing, and uh, back with the Germany launch vehicle, and Wally Shirar and Tom Stafford in the spacecraft, things still appear to be going well there. They are going through a series of communications checks with the blockhouse at the present time. Uh, we're looking good as our count continues for the second phase of the Gemini 6 mission, and that is, the, of course, the Gemini 6 liftoff. Uh, once we do get some good orbital perimeters on the Agena, MCC, the Mission Control Center in Houston, will be advising us here at the Cape of what our proper time will be to launch in order to make the Gemini 6 rendezvous. This information will come perhaps with some early data at about 40 minutes before liftoff. Then at about the 18 mark in the countdown, uh, Chris Kraft, the flight director, will advise the launch vehicle test conductor at pad 19 of the time he wants to launch. Our hold time, our planned hold time at T minus three minutes will be coordinated with the time of liftoff requested by the flight director. We're now at T minus 82 minutes and 20 seconds. This is Gemini 6 launch control. And the situation is now that it's been 13 minutes since the launch of the Agena, and uh, for the last uh, five minutes there have been no here. reports. Here's Paul Haney. Our situation is this. We, uh, both the Cape Station and its nearby downrange rain stations, along with the Bermuda Station, saw an abrupt telemetry loss on the Agena vehicle at 6 minutes and 20 seconds after liftoff. That is just about the time when the uh, Agena should have started its burn to place it in the desired orbit. However, the uh, Bermuda station is reading and has been reading right along the S-band signal from the Agena. That's one of the beacons. Another station downrange, we don't have any identification on the station, has consistently followed a C-band signal. So uh, I say again, our situation is we do not have the precise telemetry which gives us uh, the kinds of immediate orbital values we'd like to have and we should have had at Bermuda. We do have two beacons uh, very definitely operating in the Agena, and they are being followed right now by the Bermuda station. This is Gemini Control, Houston. Well, obviously the Agena is aloft, but they're not getting the information back from the Agena necessary to uh, track it precisely and to get all of the uh, information they would need for a rendezvous mission. There has to be a rather massive exchange of information between the Agena and the manned spacecraft, the Gemini, to make the rendezvous mission successful. If the telemetry is not working aboard the Agena, it would certainly mean that the Gemini would not go up in an hour and 20 minutes from now as is, is scheduled to do. In that case, uh, the Gemini 6 mission would be postponed until sometime after the first of the year.